Hello everyone, today I want to talk to you about some lesser known options in War Thunder which will help you to better operate any multi-turreted tank and any tank with an anti-aircraft machine gun. The first thing is to press escape and go into your controls. Look at tank control and scroll down to weaponry. The options we're considering are here. You should set up a binding to fire from secondary guns that is different from the binding to fire from the main caliber gun. A good option is left control plus left mouse button for the secondary gun. This means you will be able to fire your main gun with a secondary gun still held in reserve. This is useful for any tank with multiple guns, as you are still ready to fire while your heavier gun is reloading. This also gives you time to readjust your aim for a follow-up shot. Now for the fun part, selecting a primary weapon, secondary weapon, machine guns, and resetting weapon selection. These are the important options. If I'm operating a Tiger E, and I want to use the anti-aircraft machine gun to engage air targets without pointing my cannon barrel far above the ground and putting myself at great risk to any enemy tank that rounds a corner, with my control setup, I would press left control and 3 on my keyboard to operate the machine gun independently of the turret. The turret and the main gun won't be moved at all when I move the cursor. Now I can also go into sniper mode, which is also specific to the perspective of the anti-aircraft machine gun. It's from a higher vantage point than the default sniper mode. If I press left control and 1 after that, I am now controlling only the turret and the main gun, and the anti-aircraft machine gun won't move relative to the turret. If I press spacebar, only the coaxial machine gun will fire. If I press left control and 4, this is my option for resetting weapon selection. Every weapon is active again. Both my turret and my anti-aircraft machine gun will point at my cursor. And if I press spacebar, both the coaxial and anti-aircraft machine guns will fire. As I said, this information applies to all tanks with anti-aircraft machine guns. Please note that if you swap to machine guns only on a heavy tank like the T-29, IS-6, Tiger E, and other tanks, the turret will not move when you aim the anti-aircraft machine gun. However, lighter tanks will turn their turrets with the machine gun even when you are in machine gun only mode. This means that light tanks with anti-aircraft machine guns cannot engage air targets without raising their barrel above the ground. I also want to point out how you can use this ability to swap between primary, secondary, and machine guns on the SMK. If you press left control in 1 with my control setup, now you're only operating the primary turret. Left control in 2, only the secondary turret. Left control in 3, only the rear facing 50 caliber machine gun. Press left control and 4 to reset and you're back to normal. If you press left control and 1 and face your primary gun backwards, this could actually be extremely useful in urban fighting, as no one would be able to sneak up behind you without you being ready to immediately counter them. And with the primary turret facing backwards, you can press left control and 3 to switch to the 50 caliber machine gun facing forwards. This machine gun has some ability to traverse left and right, and this can actually be useful in engaging fast-moving, self-propelled anti-air trucks, if they don't hit you first, of course. It goes without saying that the rear of your primary turret facing forwards puts you at risk of easier penetration, so only use this tactic if you expect to be flanked from behind. If you have multiple turrets, you can also face them left and right while crossing an intersection so that your guns are already pointed where they need to be to engage targets that may appear as you cross into the open. Before moving on to the most complicated subject, in some of the footage I'll be showing, you will see me adjust my sights like this. Before you ask me how I do that in the comments, I use my numpad keys, which are set up for the controls here. I want to talk about using secondary weapons and machine guns as a method for ranging targets in realistic and simulator battles. Here you'll see I used the Horos machine gun to range the target, and then I fired the cannon. This is a faster alternative to regular range finding. War Thunder has a built-in range finder, but its distance is rather limited. If you want to hit people beyond 800 meters, you have to fire an initial shot and adjust your aim based on whether or not you overshot or undershot. But before I talk about the specifics of ranging with a secondary gun, I need to address some basics. Every one of these horizontal lines that you will see on Tank Sites in War Thunder represents a distance of 200 meters, and there is a larger horizontal line every 400 meters. You know that if you fire at a target which you believe is 1400 meters away, and the shot lands short, and your follow-up shot, which you aim at 1600 meters, just barely overshoots, that the target is probably about 1550 meters away. But most primary weapons are slow to reload. You can use an anti-aircraft machine gun or a smaller, faster-firing secondary gun to range shots much faster than waiting for your primary turret to reload. 
but you can't range the shots for your secondary weapons and machine guns unless you use a scope specific to those weapons. By default, your sight only shows you the perspective from your turret, and the markings on your sight are based solely on the trajectory of the primary gun. The reason you can't range with a secondary gun from the perspective of the primary gun is that they are of a different caliber, and if they were of the same caliber, you wouldn't have an advantage in reload speed anyways. Different caliber guns will fire shells with different velocities and different trajectories. You can think of a trajectory as describing how much time a projectile has to fall as it travels across a given distance. Slower moving shells cover the same distance more slowly and give gravity more time to pull the shell down to the ground. This is why heavy shells from derp guns like the Sturmpanzer have such a steep trajectory. The shells are moving slowly, and they are moving slowly because it is hard to get such a heavy shell up to speed. Everything accelerates towards the Earth at 9.8 meters per second squared. The reason that lower caliber tank projectiles have a flatter trajectory and send a shell farther at the same elevation is because they can cover more horizontal distance before gravity has the time to bring them to the ground. This is basic physics and I'm leaving out terms like Newton's laws and inertia because I want to keep this as simple as possible. If you had a shell with an absurdly high velocity, you wouldn't have to make vertical adjustments for range, because the shell would cover the distance before gravity had time to act on it. You can see the deviation in where different shells land. If I fire both the primary and secondary guns, you'll see the secondary gun fires a shell that lands farther away, even though the vertical alignment of the sight is the same. Almost all tanks with multiple guns have a secondary gun that is of a smaller caliber, with a higher velocity shell. Higher velocity projectiles have a flatter trajectory. Flatter trajectories are easier to aim with because there is a smaller margin of error, but obviously, higher caliber shells can have more power despite traveling at a lower velocity. Higher caliber shells do more damage for the same reason it's better to get hit by a spitwad launched at your head at 60 miles per hour than to get hit in the head by a rock traveling at 30 miles per hour. There's more energy contained in the heavier, but slower moving projectile. In short, you must fire with the sight specific to the gun you are trying to range the, to the target with, because a sight for that gun has markings specific to the trajectory of that gun. That's why you can't range with your secondary gun from the sight of your primary gun. And here's how you actually switch to the sight for your secondary gun. Just use the binding you set up here. If you think a tank is 1300 meters away, with my control scheme, you would press left control and 2, adjust your aim for 1300 meters and fire, and you would adjust your follow-up shot to get a better understanding of your target's range. Then you would press left control and 1 to swap back to the primary gun. This is actually why the mouse has a secondary gun. It exists for ranging, and you must use this process to be able to use that secondary gun for ranging purposes. I have two final parting notes. First. You might realize that War Thunder's options only allow you to control three turrets independently, or three weapons independently. If you're in a tank like the Independent, the developers do not allow you to control every single turret independently. And even if you could, you wouldn't be able to effectively manage them all individually. And the second final party note, if you are in a tank with two guns in the same turret, like the American M6A1 or the German Premium Neubaufarszug, you can't adjust the secondary gun when you are in the secondary gun mode, so you have to swap back and forth to aim it. This makes it harder to range with them, but it's still possible. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something from this video.